Hello, welcome friends. Today is Sunday, March 14th, 2021, and this is your virtual Sunday school lesson. I'm so excited to see you and I hope you're ready to get started. So far, we have spent the new year talking about what we believe and raise your hand if you thought it was amazing. I know I have, especially recently, we have been discussing God the Father, and it's so important for us to know what we believe and why we live the way that we live. And we are going to be picking up there today. We're going to talk more about God the Father. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to learn. It's going to be great. I hope you have your Bibles. We're going to sing. We're going to pray. And then I'll meet you right back here. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to meet today. God, we ask that as we go into our lesson and discussion today, that you open our hearts as we learn more about you as God, our Father. God, we thank you for loving us and protecting us in a way that only you can. God, we ask that as we continue to have these these discussions and lessons that you help us to understand your word and hide those words in our hearts that when we go out in our communities that we can bring more people to know you and love them the way that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope everyone found their Bibles and if you're still looking, we're just going to review. So, so far, we've learned that God the Father is unique. God the Father is creator and sustainer. God the Father is eternal. And just last week, we learned God the Father is father and judge. So, you know, when we say God the Father, we mean God, the one and only true God that we serve our savior who created us and everything in this world and God the father who loves us so much that he sent his only son Jesus down here to the world and he died for our sins so that God could redeem us meaning pay off so he paid off our sins when he died on the cross our sins sins being anything that we do that doesn't honor and obey God or anything that we have done and will do all of our sins he died to pay for them to redeem us so God the Father is our Savior and our Heavenly Father he protects us he loves us he sustains us he keeps us going and we are going to continue with God the Father today. So before we continue talking about God the Father, I have a few questions. Have you ever seen one of these? 
or one of these. And what about one of these? If you haven't seen any of these, I will go ahead and tell you that all three were used years ago to play and listen to music. And like most things that we used long ago or most things that are old, we consider them as a part of our history, things from the past. But currently, we don't listen to music like that anymore. We don't use these CD-ROMs or these vinyl records or these cassette tapes for music anymore. We use Apple Music or Spotify or other streaming services on our phones or computers in order to get our music. And listening to music and playing music from CDs and vinyls and cassette tapes is not considered our way and how we do it currently for music. And we can't stream music from a cassette tape because that is a thing of the past. So when we're talking about history and things of the past, it may bring you to another question. Hmm, what about God? Because we usually say God is a part of history or God's history is in the Bible and it, the Bible is historical. And we talk about God and we know that things in the Bible happened years ago. And we read about God's history and his life and his works in a book called the Bible that's 2000 or more than 2000 years old. So it may have you thinking, well, Will God still work in our lives? Will God still produce miracles in our lives? Even though the Bible is so old, even though when Jesus came down to earth, that was so long ago was history. Will he still work for us today? Well, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, absolutely. God is still at work, even today. Remember, God is eternal, meaning that he is everlasting. He goes on forever and ever, and he will always exist. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10. Turn with me really quick. If you need to pause it to find it, you can. But let's go ahead and read it. Verse 10 says, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. So God the Father is living and he is everlasting. So God is still at work even today. And you may still be asking, well, how? Well, we know that God is living because when we go to him in prayer, there is a connection with him and God listens to us. And we know that he listens to us and there's a connection because when we go to him in prayer, he can speak to us and not like talk out loud in a voice that we can hear, but he speaks to our hearts and our minds. And when we connect with him in prayer, he can touch our hearts and change our mind and our thinking. And that's one way that we know that he's living because we still connect with him when we go to him in prayer. And we connect with him when we read our Bibles. When we read our Bibles, there is a connection with God. And we can see in his word how 
things happened in the past. And some of the same things that happened in the past still happens in the future. And we see that God was able to handle that then. And even now, he uses those same stories, all of his same words to help us solve problems and navigate the world and figure out how to live in the world that God created and all the different situations that we deal with today. Because a lot of it are the same things that people in the Bible dealt with. So we can connect to him when we read our Bibles and his word. And he uses his word to guide us and to show us how to live. And not only does it guide us and show us how to live, it also comforts us. And he's living because we can connect with him in his word and he will connect with us and cause us to be comforted and feel comfort when we read his word, when we're sad. Because we are able to connect with God. And oftentimes in the Bible, when there was something that was going wrong and the people in the Bible were sad, God always one in the Bible. He always got the victory. God always came out on top and did what was best for his people. So we can be comforted when we connect with God when reading his word because we know as long as God is with us and as long as we are connected with God, then we can win and he is going to work it out for us for the best all right so say it with me god the father is the living god and he is still at work even today in the world that we live in he's still at work so i have another word for you this word is sovereign so sovereign means that God has all the power and authority, which means God is the only one in control of the whole entire world. God the Father is sovereign. Okay, look at this globe. This globe has bodies of waters, continents, countries, and even some cities on here. But I am going to point to some countries and I want you to try to guess which country it is. So what about this one? This one is the largest country in the world. It is Russia. And what if I pointed to this country over here? This is Japan. And what if I came around and pointed to this country? It's where we are, America. <laughs> so we're in the United States of America. So all countries and places in the world is controlled by God. God is sovereign so it doesn't matter if they're on the top or the bottom from the north atlantic ocean even through the antarctic god is in control god is sovereign so what was that word sovereign so we know that sovereign means God has all the power, all of the authority. God is in control. And that's of the whole world. And there are over 200 countries. And in some countries, they all have, well, all countries have rulers or leaders who's over the country. 
But in some countries, they may have a king. In some countries, they may have a queen. In some countries, they may have a prime minister. Um, here in the United States, we have a president. So even though we have leaders who God allows to run the countries, God is sovereign and in control over the whole world. The Bible tells us that God is the one who is actually in control. So we are going to read Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. If you need a moment to find it, you can always press pause. But we're going to go ahead and read it. Verse 17 says, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. So God is sovereign. He has all the power. He made the world with all of his power, with all of the authority that he has. He made the world. There is nothing that is too hard for him. And he is in control. God the Father is the living God. And he is with us always. Ready to connect with us in prayer. Ready to connect with us through his word. And because he is sovereign. In ruling power over everything and everyone. We can trust him to love us, guide us, and protect us like no one else in the world can. So I am going to challenge you this week to connect with God the Father in prayer. Connect with God the Father through his word. And he is waiting for you. He's with you. And it's is amazing that we have the chance to serve a God who is our Savior, who is a living God and we can connect with, and who wants to love us and protect us. So I am always blown away every time I think about how amazing God is. And I pray that you connect with him this week and we will see you again next week. Bye.